Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. The fit for this video is Metropolitan State University. Go Roadrunners. Let's take a look at a video. But whether or not a member of the LGBTQ plus community cares at all regarding what the Bible says, there are people in societies all around the world today who are leveraging these interpretations of the Bible to gin up prejudices, including you, Dan. You just condemn the act according to the way you understand the Bible, that the act of penetration and receiving, that's condemned in the Bible, according to Paul. You just said that yourself. You're partaking in that prejudice. I didn't condemn anyone. I acknowledge that Paul condemns certain people. Are you really incapable of distinguishing my condemnation of a group of people from my recognition that someone else inappropriately condemns a group of people? And to facilitate legislation of all kinds that deny members of that community access to power and resources of all kinds, access to jobs, access to public services, access to medical care that result in them not being safe within their own families, that result in youth taking their own lives, that result in other people taking their lives. What about the act of shunning in, in Mormonism? That's a practice of the church. If you don't believe in what the, uh, the church advocates for, then you're shunned. You lose your family, you lose your work, you lose your friends, you're ostracized from the community. What about that? Is that okay? Have you done any videos commenting on that, that the church practices that? There's numerous people, numerous te testimonies of people who've been absolutely, their lives destroyed in sh uh, by shunning. So two concerns here. The first, uh, you didn't even acknowledge, much less directly confront the indisputable fact that people have long been and are still leveraging these readings of the Bible to cause harm to others. People who may not care at all what the Bible has to say about homosexuality. People who are content to ignore it throughout their lives. Those people are harmed by the interpretations that you're promoting. You didn't acknowledge that, you just tried to deflect with this rhetorical prophylaxis. And that brings up the second concern your rhetorical prophylaxis is bafflingly ignorant because Mormonism does not practice shunning. Shunning is a practice within the Jehovah's Witnesses. You couldn't even get the right religion. But I do condemn it. And if it happens within Mormonism, I condemn it. Whether people are trying to ostracize, shun, or push out active Mormons they don't like, inactive Mormons they don't like, former Mormons they don't like, people who have never been Mormon but who criticize the church, I condemn all of that. I'm capable of acknowledging your concerns. You have demonstrated yourself not only to be incapable of addressing my concerns, but to be wildly uninformed about my concerns. This is the far bigger problem with attempts to maintain this outdated, this ignorant, and this bigoted reading of the Bible. Sounds like you're inferring that I'm the ignorant and a bigot. Um... I know you made that about the interpretation that you're saying I share in that, but that's not very nice. Sounds a little bit prejudicial, Dan. Nope, I was inferring no such thing. I was talking entirely and exclusively about the interpretation. The Bible does not do this. The Bible presents multiple different conceptualizations of God and God's agents and multiple different ideas about the right way to live. And many of these ideas directly contradict other ideas. And so anyone who tries to assert a single perspective regarding how to live from the Bible has absolutely no option but to negotiate with the text, which means deciding which texts are going to be centered and given priority and which texts are going to be reinterpreted, marginalized, or outright ignored. Anyone who asserts a single perspective from the Bible regarding the right way to live has absolutely no choice but to negotiate with the text. That's the only possible way to do this, which means that any single perspective regarding the right way to live from the Bible is going to be contingent upon one's own social circumstances, needs, exigencies, rhetorical goals, which means it's always going to be subjective and it's always going to be changing. I agree. I don't disagree with what you said. The only issue is, is that you can make a definitive position that the Bible doesn't condemn homosexuality. It doesn't even speak about it. You can make, it, make that unilateral decision. But when the moment I try and collate scriptures together and, and put them together, you say, no, no univocality, you can't do that. Again, mere arbitration as to when hermeneutics can apply, when certain definitive statements can be made. It seems that, again, you're acting as this moral arbiter of the biblical universe online, and you can decide what is applicable and what is not. 
So this is still not engaging my concerns directly. This is just another rhetorical deflection based on this accusation that I'm holding myself up as a moral arbiter. But I am on social media to provide my best efforts at a critical data-driven approach to the Bible. And I'm not perfect at it. No one can ever be. But if you have a problem with my take on the data, you address my take on the data. And I'm pretty sure that it's usually going to be driven by dogma, but any good faith effort to engage my take on the data is going to be met with a good faith response. This is not that. This is rhetorical deflection. So two things here. There are no definitions in the Bible. There are descriptions and there are prescriptions and there are proscriptions, and we derive our own definitions from them, but the definitions themselves are not in the Bible. They're negotiated. Semantics. So this is another petty rhetorical deflection. This is not remotely semantics. Because if the definitions that you assert are in the Bible are not in the Bible, but are just the outcome of your own socially situated negotiation with the text, mediated by your own interpretations of the text, then they are not in the Bible. They are just your own positions. And that makes all the difference in the world.